Welcome to our panel, Food for the Day After Tomorrow. Um, it is a fact that our food choices do harm the environment, might be unhealthy, or produce a lot of waste. Although mm -hmm. all of that is widely known, change takes only place very slowly. The three people I will have here on my panel have all, in, have all innovative ideas to boost that change. So, I'd like to welcome Parsi Weinecke, the founder and CEO of Solar Foods. The, mm -hmm. He created a technology that, dev, um, that allows creating a nutrient-rich protein to be produced using air and electricity. Um, also with me on stage, I'd like to welcome David Barandes, co-founder and managing director of Piece of Meat. David, are you ready? Where is he? We'll see. <laughs> Okay. David is the co-founder and managing director of Piece of Meat. Piece of Meat produces cultured meat straight from animal cells. The meat is indistinguishable from conventional meats, but without the need for raising or killing animals. So, David, please join us. Hi. Hi, David. Also joining on stage is Lena Jüngst. Lena Jungs is a co-founder and chief anthologist of AirUp. AirUp is a new drinking bottle that flavors water by adding just scent. Hello, Lena. Hi. Hi. Good to have you all here. Hey. Let's start right away. Hey, Lena. Um, our diet contributes significantly to climate change. This has been known for years. Lena. Why do you think people's eating habits are not more sustainable? And how will your product help to change that? Well, I think uh, the problem is that the eating habits are very much connected to uh, our human desire for convenience and flavor. And the problem is that the things that taste very well and that are very convenient uh, are normally not that sustainable. But for us, it is quite hard to yeah, to get, act against that on a long term. So um, we do eat muffins, we, eat, uh, we drink exotic fruit juices, and we get home deliveries from Burger King, for example, um, even though we know it's bad for us and it's bad for the environment. So I think it doesn't help to educate people because they already know, um, and I'm persuaded the solution has to be provided from companies or has to be provided from creators that can design products in a way um, that they meet the human desire for convenience and flavor, for example, or uh, for the desires and at the same time respect the environment and the health. And that's what we why we developed AirUp, for example. So we provide a flavor experience, but at the same time, it's a product that helps you to drink completely healthy, and the system itself is more sustainable than other drinks that you can buy in the supermarket. Mm -hmm. Lena, you're all about drink, but David, you do meat. Um, your company creates cultured meat. What exactly is that? Uh, and why are the current meat alternatives not good enough to change meat eaters' diets? Yeah, what is that? Uh, why do we do it? How do we do it? Uh, let's talk about it a little bit. So we make um, better and more sustainable meats. Uh, we do it out of the love for the animals, for the planet, and also for innovation. Uh, and we're ultimately combining two purposes together. Uh, one being really removing animals from the global food production value chain and on the other hand, also producing a meat that is at, as meaty, as tasty as the livestock alternative um, that you would know from you know, your local McDonald's. Uh, so how do we do it? Uh, we're taking a cell straight from the animal. It could be, for example, uh, a stem cell, which we're then proliferating into large amounts um, and are turning this into an edible food product. So on the molecular level, you have the same um, 
product, as you know from the animal, but you don't need any animal in the process of growing that product, so there's no animal killed and no animal harmed, not even any animal grown uh, in the production of our process. Um, we are focusing on the B2B market. We want to have an impact as early and as big as possible, so we're producing, um, aiming to produce a lot of biomass, which is meats or fats that we're then supplying into the food um, system, so we're selling it to food brands in order to help them improve their products um, and, and, and bring a product to the market that contains our ingredient and ultimately convince meat eaters not to buy uh, meat alternat alternatives only once, but also many times over. Interesting. Parsi, you and your company, you try to find a whole other way to produce food. <laughs> uh, what are you doing differently and how will this convince people to eat more environmentally friendly? Yeah, what we are doing for the first time is actually disconnecting food production from agriculture. So historically, we've always been bound to certain hectares um, of land. Um, and we've learned agriculture, hunter-gatherers uh, through, through uh, learning agriculture. Now, basically, industrialized uh, food production uh, through fertilizers and so on. But still, it's always been bound to land. Our gift to the society is dealing with this. What we are using is basically a fermentation technology similar to winemaking. In winemaking, you have a sugars liquid and a fermenter, and you put in the fermenter yeast that eats sugar for energy and carbon and then makes the alcohol the surrounding liquid. We do a bit the same, but our microbe, which is naturally curing organisms, so we've actually collected that and found that in, in nature. It is also grown in a fermenter, but we don't feed sugars, but we feed hydrogen and carbon dioxide for the organism. And then it grows and multiplies. And this is a new ingredient, kind of new wheat, new harvest that we can provide. Mm -hmm. So, oh, are we still on? Yeah. Okay. Parsi, um, you're CEO of a startup company. So um, we are talking about change here, changing the diets. Why do, you, why do you think startups are so important to facilitate change? Um, startups can provide uh, new technologies for the society. Um, a, a company like ourselves, we are spinning out from our National Research Institute. And uh, we, uh, it's the role of, uh, of an engineer and scientist to roll out new technologies from the laboratory and provide uh, uh, solutions for, for the society. Interesting. Um, David, the meat industry is a really huge global market, but how do you think a startup like yours can change this really big market? Yeah, yeah the market is, is really big, as you say. And in, uh, in 2050, the, market, the, meat, the global meat market will be worth $1.8 uh, trillion. Um, uh, massive indeed. It's uh, comparable to the scale of uh, the global coal markets or the automotive um, industry. Um, and not only in scale, but also in fate, I think uh, it, is, it is doomed to be disrupted. And, and that's what we're in for. Um, so what we do is we're combining a couple of um, technologies in order to advance our product, right? So there's uh, stem cell R&D, uh, additive manufacturing, food science. Advancements in those technologies get us to where we're here today. And only since you know, a couple of years, it is now possible to um, produce uh, such a, such a bioengineered product that on the molecular level, as mentioned, is the same as a conventional meat product. Um, obviously, I think startups, due to the speed of innovation that we're operating at, also due to our uh, DNA of collaboration with academia, with other commercial partners, are in a great position um, to disrupt this space. Um, we also see a lot of uh, investor interest uh, generally towards the alternative protein space. Um, so I believe that the startups are the right ecosystem players to, uh, to you know, lead the change here. And we already also see big um, you know, consumer goods companies obviously um, jumping on that and trying to find their role uh, in the new, let's say, meat alternative ecosystem. To be disruptive, you need exposure. Lena, your product is already on the market, and it was already featured on the German edition of Shark Tank, uh, Die Hülle der Löwen. Um, was it important to introduce your product to a bigger market? And what are your plans for the future? Sorry, could you repeat ah. the last question? <laughs> I, I, Sorry. They're very... Um, your, your product is already on the market, and you mm -hmm. were, was already featured on a TV show. Um, 
what was that your, your, your first step to make it big on the market? And what do you plan to do in the future? Will you go globally? Well, I think first of all, we weren't in the Höhle der Löwen, so we weren't on the TV show. We just have two investors on board from the show. Mm -hmm. So um, I think one of the big steps, of course, was that we had great partners um, who started with us from the beginning on. So we got expertise on board, we got money on board. So that's very important if you want to launch a product. Um, and I think, yeah, I think. Well, I think the biggest challenge was to, to develop a hardware product in a way that it is, in the end, um, not too expensive for the consumer. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you need to scale up quite quickly and you need to, to build up a company, which is hard enough itself, but you need to get structures going that you can scale in quite a short amount of time. So, for example, we started with five people a year ago or a bit more than a year ago and now we're almost 70 people so those were big challenges and i think yeah the the key to success was that we always really believed in the potential of our product and we kept on going <laughs> if you can say so yes <laughs> okay um and Pazi. What would your company need to go to the next level? Is it also exposure? Is it funding? What do you need to, to make it really big? Yeah, in the industry where we are, where we actually aim at large-scale industrial production that involves a lot of investment. So technology is basically brewing and there will be uh, smaller or larger breweries. Uh, it involves a lot, a lot of uh, capital cost. And for us, uh, it is now a critical stage where we are basically scaling from a relatively small scale, uh, about a garage size, to first commercial plant uh, that that uh, is uh, that we go with with to the, to the market, and that actually requires some tens of millions already before we actually generate revenue, and that is quite challenging for for many investors to to. Think, and it is very different, definitely, for example, to e-commerce, gaming, or, or social media apps. Um, when we are talking about exchange, uh, exposure and we are talking about making an impact, we need to reach everybody. Um, because we want to fundamentally change how we, our eating habits. So, um, for example, um, there are many alternatives already on the market for, for there are meat alternatives, there are alternatives to drink. So, um, for example, David, most of these alternatives are bought by wealthy young people in urban areas. But my, da my dad lives in a small town. He loves burgers, he loves steak. He isn't really that interesting in um, rescuing the environment. What is your idea to change, to, to reach these people, to, to change the um, diet of my dad? Yeah, yeah. Uh well, and he rightfully so loves his steak, right? It's, it's tasty, it's juicy, it's a meaty indulgence. Mm -hmm. uh, who doesn't, right? Who doesn't like a, a good piece of steak uh, every now and then? Um, but we also need to understand that this indulgence comes at a very high cost uh, for our environment. Um, and that cost, combined with the growth of population, where we're reaching up to you know, 9.8 billion people by 2050, growing middle classes, increased demands of uh, the quality of protein that those people will take in, leads to the actual need of, of doubling the amount of protein produced um, by 2050. We don't have the resources for that. We don't have the space for that. Um, we don't have the water for that. So if we were to change, not to change the system, stay with the current system and yet double the output, that comes at the cost of you know, rainforests or animal welfare. So make more space or pack animals uh, closer together. Um, only one burger alone, um, the production of one burger alone um, uh, needs um, 2,000, uses 2,300 liters of water. That's, that's the amount, that's the average water usage of an uh, monthly water usage of a European citizen uh, only for one hamburger, right? So now as we come to the market with a product that tastes as good as the meaty indulgence um, that your dad so much craves for, plus have a solution to, you know, th those um, planetary um, sustainable issues that meat production causes, I do believe that we have a strong argument to also win over your dad, Tobias. <laughs> May I comment this as well? When working together with Pasi on this, obviously, <laughs> on the protein part. 
So may I comment this as well? So um, I don't think actually that consumers no. will change very quickly their behaviors and it's fair to ask that they don't. So basically it's the role of the companies and new technologies to provide exactly the same kind of meat structure what you want or if it's a it's new kind of milk or egg uh, but it will be just uh, fundamentally more sustainable but the consumer possibly don't really notice that that how that meat arrived on the plate was completely changed mm -hmm. so when we're talking about celebrating change we want to change the future so um david when you look in the future let's say 10 years in the future um what will be different what will i be able to to go to mcdonald's get a burger and it will be your product yeah, totally. I mean, uh, first of all, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, what, what a great time to be alive right now, right? So uh, apart from uh, US politics and COVID, I think we're really entering uh, a, a unprecedented uh, time of, of um, technological innovation that is really focused on planetary health, on sustainability. We've had lots of uh, innovations in the past, but a little bit less focus on, you know, what really matters in the long term, which is, uh, let's, I will call it planetary health. Um, so in 10 years from now, um, you will see cultured meat and other alternative protein sources mainstream on the market. You will see those products um, contribute uh, to a share larger than 10%. I'm not talking plant-based meats that we already have today, but um, synthetic biology uh, sources will contribute to more than 10% of the global protein market. Um, there are many companies like ours uh, and Passis uh, on the market. Um, we all, I think, have our role to play. A piece of meat alone is looking to contribute uh, in 10 years from now annually um, by 3% to the total um, Paris climate um, targets and also take out over 3 million cows uh, every year. Uh, and that's really the objective we're in for. I mean, yes, I think it's a great market. It's a huge market. Uh, we will all enter very promising um, fields of, of financial return. But what we really want to do is, you know, take out those animals from the production chain and get the global climate, keep global warming down and uh, at sustainable levels. So, yes, uh, you will find the product uh, in the McDonald's and you will yourself, by purchasing that product, contribute to a sustainable future. Looking forward to it. Pazi, same question. How do you think your product will change the future? Um, from our behalf, we want to, to provide the humankind the, the opportunity for, for delinking food production from agriculture and then basically um, what follows through applying that technology, uh, deploying it uh, to the, uh, and, and all the environmental benefits, they are basically inherently there. Uh, uh, in, in, the, in the technology, but then of course consumer will decide. We have to also, the technology is one part, but consumer uh, will require very good tasting products and we, we need to be there to, to respond to those demands. Thank you. Um, Lena, I know many people are, are already using your product. Um, I know because one of my friends um, actually recommended it. Um, but um, when you really hit a, a big market and everybody has an app at home, what is, what's the, the big headline you want to read about it when you're really successful? What, what's the thing we, you want to, to change, what do you want to accomplish with your own bottle? <laughs> well, I think what I would like to read is that Air Up inspires change because we already we see the sign here, celebrate change. And I think, uh, as I said before, it's not about education, but it's about giving better solutions to a new generation that actually uh, is so used to experience, strong experiences and demands those experiences. But at the same time, they do care about their environment and their own health. So I hope we find more solutions within that uh, with that, with that same thinking. So, okay. Um, I'm afraid that we are um, that we don't have much time anymore. Um, thank you very much, everybody on the thank panel, you. for the interesting talk. Um, David, Lena, Parsi, thank you, um, and thank you all for listening. And um, I will hope I will see each of you on the Green Tech Festival, and we can connect. And please feel free to connect with all our panelists today. Thank you, and have fun on the festival. Bye.